I've got a quick one for you guys today, and this is what I'll call the luckiest divisibility test because it's talking about divisibility by seven. So the rule goes like this, seven divides n. In other words, n is a multiple of seven if and only if seven divides into this new kind of crazy looking object, which is n minus a naught over 10 minus two times a naught. You might say, well, what's a naught? Well, it is the ones digit or the units digit of n. So in other words, if we write n via its digits, as am, am minus one down to a1, a naught. I'll put the line over it just to say that there we're meaning that this is the number made up of those digits. So these numbers are obviously between zero and nine. Then our fraction here, which could be a little bit problematic, is not problematic. Because notice if we take n minus a naught, that just puts a zero right here, which means we can divide by 10 and we're left with the number that we get after just truncating off that ones digit. So this process here creates a smaller number, which is actually very nice because we can continue creating smaller and smaller numbers until we have something that's obviously divisible by seven. Okay, so I'm gonna prove this one way really quick, just using some properties of divisibility, and then I'll prove something that's slightly stronger involving modular arithmetic. So let's first start by noticing that if seven divides n minus a naught over 10 minus two a naught, then seven also divides 10 times this. And that's actually an if and only if statement because 10 and seven are relatively prime. So I'll write it like this. This is if and only if seven divides like I said, n times this, which is n minus a naught minus 20 a naught. But notice we can put those things together and see that that means that seven divides n minus 21 a naught. But then always, so let's write that over here. Always we know that seven divides 21 a naught because 21 is a multiple of seven. So if seven divides 21 a naught, then that means that seven must divide n because it divides that combination of n and 21 a naught. All of our steps were if and only if statements, so we're actually good to go there. We have our divisibility test for seven. So now we're gonna prove a slightly stronger and more general statement. So I'll call that the following claim. And that is that n minus a naught over 10 minus two a naught is congruent to five n mod seven. So this is a little bit different than other divisibility tests when you're working with modular arithmetic because usually you keep the remainder exactly the same. But here the remainder of this guy right here and the number n may not be the same. So notice the remainder of this is going to be the same thing as the remainder of dividing 5n by 7, not n by 7. And that could be problematic if we were trying to compute n mod 7, but for divisibility we're okay. Because notice if n is 0 mod 7, then 5n is 0 mod 7, and that makes this thing 0 mod 7, and then vice versa. Okay, so let's see how the proof of this little claim goes. And we can do that just with pretty simple modular arithmetic. So I'm gonna take this n minus a naught over 10 minus two a naught, and I'll rewrite 10 as 10 inverse, keeping in mind that we're working mod seven. So we have 10 inverse times n minus a naught minus two a naught. And now we'll go over here and make a little bit of a side calculation. Well, let's notice that 10 times five is equal to 50, which is congruent to one mod seven. Because it's one more than a multiple of seven, it's one more than 59. So that means that 10 inverse is congruent to five mod seven. And we have the modular inverse of 10 mod seven, and that is five. So that means we can replace this 10 inverse here with five. And now we're essentially done. So notice this is congruent to 5n minus 7a naught mod seven, 
where I got the seven by negative five A naught minus two A naught. Okay, cool, but now seven is congruent to zero mod seven, so this all simplifies down to just five N mod seven, which is exactly what we wanted to show, and that's a good place to stop.